Hey guys, Comic Boom here to talk about Stan Lee. Stan the Man Lee. There's a lot of videos out there with all kinds of YouTubers like myself uh, making comments about Stan Lee and I just, I have to say a little bit about him so this is probably going to be a five or six minute uh, quick video but I, I got to have at least one uh, Stan Lee tribute uh, video <laughs> on my YouTube uh, uh, video reviews and commentaries because uh, Stan the Man He's a legend. I've been collecting comic books for a long time, since 1976. And when I first walked into a comic book shop, if I'm brutally honest, I actually don't remember the exact first time, but I remember the first place. I know, I know what place it is. It's an old bookstore and they had some old comic books there. And my first experience with comic books, it was more DC Comics. Uh, but DC Comics, and my first Marvel comic, was Spider-Man and Fantastic Four. There was Spider-Man and Fantastic Four comics. And, you know, one thing about Stan Lee that, that always stood out for me is Stan Lee was the first celebrity, real-life person that, had, that I actually saw being associated with comic books because back in the day, you know, you know when you'd read the letters pages and what have you, uh, you didn't... I mean, I, I always knew that there were people that created the comic book stories, obviously, because I, I read the comic books, you know, just, you know, I just ate them up. I mean, I read every page. And so I knew that I became familiar with who the writers and the colorers and the inkers and the, the artists were. Uh, but I never really, you never really saw pictures of them. You never really got a sense of their personality. Well, Stanley was the exception. And he was one of the very, he was really the first comic book celebrity. And one of the things that stands out for me and just uh, just some things that I want to thank Stan for is, you know, Stanley, the guy was, he, it was, he made it chic to be geek before it was chic to be geek, you know? And he did it with that smiling Stan face. And... He was really almost, he was even almost the first cosplayer, you know, before even the days where comic conventions became the norm. I mean, nowadays, comic conventions are amazing. They're huge. There's these huge epic entertainment extravaganzas. But, you know, back in the early 60s, I mean, I don't even know when the first comic convention came out. It was probably the late 60s, maybe early 70s. But, I mean, there was, a, there was those pictures of, Stan Lee, you know, laying on the couch, you know, with just the, uh, lying on the couch with the comic book covering his privates and the smiling Stan. I mean, he, I mean, it was almost him saying he wasn't dressed up. I mean, Stan Lee was naked lying on that couch, you know, at, and the only thing he had was a, was a Batman versus Incredible Hulk DC Marvel crossover covering his privates. I mean, that was Stan, man, Stan Lee. And it wasn't just that he was an epic personality and he wanted to get people into comic books he did something incredible and phenomenal that was so simple that so just blew us all away blew all of us away that collected comic books or would come to love them he he gave characters flaws like peter parker flaws nowadays we take that for granted and it's always the simplest ideas that gain the most traction you know i mean god forbid he, he actually gave a character flaws he made them interesting i mean it never occurred to to dc comics you gotta remember when, when Marvel first came out, when Marvel first started publishing comic books, when it became more timely and it became, there was the Atlas Expl uh, implosion in the 19, 1958 and then Marvel Comics came in, into the scene. In 11 short years, Marvel surpassed DC in sales and never looked back and they've been, beaten, they've been beating DC in the sales department ever since for the next 50 years after that. From, and so that, that's absolutely phenomenal and, and DC couldn't figure out what Stanley was doing. They couldn't figure out what he was doing different with his stories. And it was, and yet it, it was so obvious he was giving his characters flaws. It never occurred to the writers at DC, for example, that, you know, you could, you know, make Superman give him some flaws. You're writing about Superman. Superman doesn't have flaws. You're Superman. Batman's supposed to be pristine and perfect and a super detective. It never occurred to them. You know, why, why are people interested in, 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 in Peter Parker talking to uh, pages of him talking to Aunt May? Who cares about that? And yet readers ate it up. They loved it. And they loved the Fantastic Four. And they loved Black Panther. And they, and they, and they loved the Hulk. And a oh, good Lord. And, and Thor. And uh, the Avengers. And uh, the X-Men. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And all thanks to Stan Lee. We owe it all to him. I can't imagine read, uh, reading and reviewing a comic book and not talking about a character that has, doesn't have some flaws. It's the flaws that make them interesting. And as simple a concept as that is, we owe it all to Stan Lee. And 
I love the fact that Stan Lee was a person who loved comic books right to the bitter end. And it wasn't a bitter end. It was a fantastic, well, no, it was a fantastic, it was a fantastic life. I mean, he, he lived to the age of 95. There might have been some darker moments near the end there, but give the guy a break. I mean, he's, he lived life like the characters that he wrote. He was a flawed man, but that's what made him perfect. That's what made him Ex that's what made him Stan the man. He was the man. Stan put the man in all the Superman, you know? And that's what makes him so extraordinary. DC may have had Superman, but Stan Lee, without the man in the metahuman, without the man in the mutant, well, what's, what's the point? What, what's, the, what's the point of reading it? There's no flaws. Better a diamond with, all, with a flaw than a pebble without, right? As that saying goes. And that's Stan. And... Stan Lee, of course, he was born Stanley Lieber in 1922, lived to the age of 95. Stan Lee, he just took his first name and he expanded it, and all well, the rest is history. Married his wife uh, two weeks after meeting her. Married for 72 years. She died last year, and uh, I think the general consensus is uh, Stan just sort of maybe lost a little bit of his spark in the last year, and and, uh, well, it's everyone saying it's nice that maybe he's entering the gates of Valhalla. Uh, and uh, you can imagine him with Jack Kirby and Steve uh, uh, Ditko now are probably, you know, creating up a storm and uh, exciting the imaginations of uh, all those warriors in Valhalla. That, 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 would be, that's, that sounds to be pretty epic. I'm sure somewhere, maybe Alex Ross will draw the picture of those three collaborating. That would be epic. <laughs> in any event, guys, um... I just want to, that's my two cents worth for Stanley. Uh, you want to pay tribute to him, read a comic book, pay, buy a Marvel comic, buy any comic, and rejoice. Enjoy it, and uh, buy someone else a comic. Pay it forward, and do it with a smile, and even throw in an Excelsior here and there. <laughs> that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching, guys. And um, thank you, Stan, and Excelsior. And until next time, Comic Boom, out.